All right, so I'm getting ready to make a heat sink for this frame for my e-bike controller. The controller seen right there. The black uh, aluminum plate is a heat sink that's already made. That white rectangle is thermal padding. And that right there is a bare sheet of 1 8 inch 50-50 aluminum, which I got from the hardware store. Uh, cut to size six and a half inches by 18 inches after I make the heat sink. I'll I'll cut it down This bike has a heat sink that's already on it. You'll notice that's I uh, used quarter inch on that one Which is uh, thicker than it needs to be So I went with a uh, 1 8 inch this time And this is a bike that has the heat sink taken off because I uh, blew up my controller uh, one very rainy day was riding in very wet conditions my fault. I had the controller taken off This is the heat sink setting on the bike. That's the bottom of the heat sink. The heat sink goes like this On there And it goes out like that And it mounts on the frame with four bolts and you mount the controller on there like that it's mounted on there and you put some thermal pads between the controller and the heat sink and also put some thermal pads uh, put some thermal pads there on those uh, vertical uh, cross members there that transfers the heat to the frame here's the thermal pad it's a strange material kind of feels almost like a silly putty or play-doh that transfers heat Here's the thermal pad as it sits on the heat sink. You can buy these that have adhesive backing. You can buy them in one millimeter, 1.5 millimeter, five millimeter or more. This particular thermal pad does not have adhesive backing. This thermal pad will be attached with clamping pressure with a controller mounting bolts. So the heat sink gets attached to these cross members. So each of these cross members is gonna need a piece of thermal pad to transfer the heat from the heat sink to the frame so I'll measure that turns out to be one and a quarter by six and a half so I'll cut three rectangles to lay on there to mount under the heat sink so there it is there uh, we can pretend that the thermal padding is is under there on those three cross members and then we'll put the thermal padding cut to size under the mark II controller and there it is it's under there note that I use a 24 fet controller uh, where I only need an 18 FET to save on heat to reduce the heat that the FETs had to deal with instead of 18 an extra 6 to absorb the current and make sure after you have it all installed those wires get lots of duct tape on there to keep the water out you can put duct tape on the top and the bottom as much duct tape as you want and then cover the whole thing with the trunk bag so that will conduct the heat away from the controller to the heat sink to the frame so as far as my new heat sinks for my new frame I use the proper size material 1 8 inch thick uh, gonna put that piece of metal right there so I need to mount it drill the holes and then uh, put on the thermal padding and mount it all up and then I'm going to trim it to save weight. You will notice that this frame doesn't have any holes drilled on those cross members because I'm going to drill more I want. So what I've done in the past and it worked out pretty well is put that heat sink flush with the cross member. Here's a completed view of that heat sink more or less flush with the cross member and it does hang off the rear a bit for mounting my flashing rear tail light and then after I make sure that that mounts up properly with my one quarter inch grade 8 hardware I'll mark the holes where the holes need to be for the this Leon Mark II controller right there drill the holes so I just had to cut the mounting bracket for the controller because it was interfering with the washers for the quarter inch grade 8 bolts that mount the heat sink to the frame so I cut that with some tin snips and I'll file it down make it flat with some pliers 
I also had to chamfer those holes because where the holes attach, it was getting in the way of the, the cross member. So I uh, chamfered those holes and have a certain type of screw. So a screw like this, that's conical. It'll drop right into that chamfered hole. This is the type of bit you use for chamfering. I also need a hole for that uh, flashing rear tail light. There'll be a hole in the rear there, centered. Get that mounted up. And I also need holes to um, attach my trunk bag, which has an ABS frame in the bottom. This is the ABS frame at the bottom of the trunk bag. The trunk bag has the big hole cut in the bottom of it to cover, house, and hide the controller. And those four holes on the outside of the ABS rectangle are what I use to mount the trunk bag slash controller housing to the uh, heat sink. So I need to drill holes in the heat sink. And I use zip ties or cable ties to attach the ABS frame to the heat sink. I like cable ties because they're lightweight, they're very economical, and they don't corrode. This is the inside of my trunk bag. That's a very thin ABS frame uh, that I hogged out a lot to make as much room as possible for the controller, make sure it would fit over there. And uh, I used aluminum rivets, which I like because like cable ties, they're economical, lightweight, and they don't corrode. And then once it's on there, it just looks like a trunk bag. You can use a neoprene gasket for additional waterproofing, which I recommend. Uh, neoprene, the material they use to make wetsuits, easily available on the internet. You can use strips, or better yet, buy a rectangle neoprene and cut out a rectangular gasket. And if you plan ahead, you can attach the trunk bag with six holes instead of four. Get a, another additional hole in, the, in that long side there for additional waterproofing. And as far as finishing the heat sink, the best thing to do is use jet hot coating, the material they use to coat mufflers, which is designed to transfer heat away. I powder coated this one matte black to match my bike.